All right, so in this video, I'd like to show you how to install Linux. Um, if your computer, say, were to go kaput and you don't know how, how to get it back up and going, I'll show you how to install Linux on this computer and uh, how to back up your files so that you can um, get your computer working again. So I started my computer up and I got this BusyBox V1.22 Ubuntu. Um, built-in shell ASH help for built list of built-in commands and so instead of starting up in Linux Mint it's just doing this screen now uh, so I could type in help I have no idea what any of that stuff is um, so what I'm gonna do is reinstall Linux and hope for the best because um, uh, this seems this whole system I don't know if it's the boot sector or whatever. I don't know how to fix this thing. I tried, tried some of these commands and I don't know what to do. So if someone can help me in the comments what to do doing this. But anyway, I've had this install on this computer for a couple of years. So I'm going to just do a reinstall anyway. And I'm going to show you how to back up your files and reinstall. So sometimes you just have to go into your, uh, into your BIOS uh, and uh, with the USB uh, boot device and just click that and uh, exit. All right, so what I've done here is I got this uh, version of Linux Mint. I'm actually running off of this USB thumb drive, this 16 gigabyte thumb drive. So in doing this, I'm able to get a an, an working OS back on my computer because the hard drive inside has, something's gone wrong in it. Uh, so it's time to just do a reinstall and install Linux Mint here. But I'm actually gonna install a newer version of Linux. This one's a few years old, it's uh, 18 something, 18.1. So I'm going to use the uh, backup hard drive, this thing here. I'm going to back up my files first because I can't get at my files. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to copy and paste my files to the hard drive and have a backup of my files before I format this drive and, uh, and then reinstall Linux. All right, so what I recommend here is one of these expansion um, uh, backup drives. I got this one. It's an it's a Seagate uh, eight terabyte expansion drive. Uh, eight terabytes a lot will store a lot of like probably do like sixteen um, five hundred gigabyte hard drives with this thing. So uh, this is one. Um, it's just a quick uh, look at this device here. It cost it was one hundred seventy nine dollars plus tax uh, when I got this thing. So let's take a look at it. Here it is. All right, so I got the Seagate plugged in, and under the live disk, it identified in under Linux, even though it doesn't say on the box. You know, it's a shame. Seagate, if you're watching this video, anyone at Seagate, this does work for Linux Mint. Um, like it says, what does it say there? Windows 10 and 7 compatible with. It doesn't say Apple. I don't buy Apple stuff anyway, so. But anyway, um, so there, oh yeah, and there's the, there's a little green light on the hard drive to let you know that it's on. So anyway, I'm going to just transfer my files off the drive here, and uh, I am going to... So there's the old drive there, you see it there in the program folder, and there is the Seagate. So I just want to, not all the files, like not the operating system, just like the media files, my work files, I want to back them up onto the Seagate drive so that I can have a backup of all my files. Alright, so I've done my backup here. Uh, so now I'm just going to... So everything is backed up on the hard drive. Now one thing I did notice that it was a little bit bigger than 304 gigabytes not all the files transferred but i got most of the files so hopefully what i'm able to salvage um of that data will will work out and then i can just uh, after this i'm going to just reinstall linux mint on this computer and uh hopefully i got most of my work files saved so anyway we'll we'll, we'll go with that anyway i got what i can get out of that and uh, well, I'll try, see if this hard drive's not dead, and let's see if I can reinstall Linux Mint on it. Okay, now that you got it installed, one thing, it's a choice now, you might want to leave it with this settings, but I prefer not to have it, is every 15 minutes the screensaver will activate, and you have to re-enter your password to get your computer back on. So I'm just going to disable those so that uh, I can just... Uh, around the house and I don't have to enter the password. I'm, I'm just using it at home, so like I'm not overly um, 
worried about that. So I go into the screensaver, and another thing you could do as well is just change a uh, change uh, what your screensaver is. Um, there's uh, just different options like this or that. Spins into forms images. Okay, well, whatever. Anyway, there's different screensavers you can select. I'm just going to leave it at this right now. I think there is a picture folder thingy in there as well. I think you can add screensavers as well. So I just usually go here for the settings. Mouse and touchpad. Now, my laptop has a touchpad. So actually, I fixed it here, but... Um... um what I had it uh, set to was actually you want to click on your touchpad. So edge scrolling, it was originally set to two finger scrolling. I don't like two finger scrolling, so that's what it would be on default. So I just went with edge scrolling so that on my touchpad, I can just go on the edge to scroll when I'm like scrolling on Facebook or whatever. And another thing it did, which really annoyed me, it had reverse scrolling direction as a default. So I just took that and unchecked it so that when you're... Uh, just basically when you're when you're surfing. I mean, if you if you kind of like that setting, you can go up or down and however you want to set it up. I just set it I've always used the computer this way, so this is the settings for the touchpad settings that I like to keep it at. And I don't see it have it doesn't really have a touch screen option in here. Uh, this computer I have is a touch screen, but what happens uh, when I touch the screen, it usually just, it touches and clicks, which creates this, which is good for like if I'm trying to just touch the screen and play a video. But um, if I'm uh, moving the cursor, it, it will select, it will click and select what I'm pointing to on the screen, which sometimes can mess up the screen settings. Another thing you want to do is this spot right here, this little shield and the uh, explanation point, that's where you do your updates. So I haven't done any updates yet. I'm just going to OK this. And it's just going to do probably the mint update, which will be a single update. And then you'll do that and on, you'll have uh, a bunch of others. No, nope, it's actually just got a whole bunch of updates here. So in doing this, you just go, obviously, you just go here, install updates, enter your password. Hint enter and then it will do it. So this is so much better than Windows because it will, you can actually select to do it. Now you can set this up to do it automatically if you want. All right, so now there's all these and I don't have any idea what all these headers, Linux headers, generic, all this stuff. I have no idea what this is. I'm gonna go okay, okay? Enter your password and then at this point it will start downloading all of the updates for your Linux system and install them. And you can you can you can still use the internet and surf. I sometimes I just I just like to let it let it be uh, and do its thing. And you can see all the this is actually a bunch of things failed. Hmm. Some servers not working right now. Anyway, so the, this will take one minute 46 seconds uh, usually it doesn't take very long to uh, do all your system updates but that's one thing uh, I recommend doing before you really get into using your new Linux system just do all the updates and then uh, once you're done that then you can go ahead and uh, start surfing the internet and you'll have that added security with most up-to-date patches and everything The following details. Wfetch Security Ubuntu Pool Main Image Magic uh, Deb Not Found. Failed to fetch. <laughs> Failed to fetch these items. Hopefully my system can still work without these things. Uh, I have no idea. Anyway, we'll just try to live without it. How to install a uh, virus scanning program. So now I use Clam TK. So here's a picture of the program here. Some reviews about it. So I'm just going to go here and install.
it wants to change those. That's fine, whatever. And it wants my password. And you enter your password and you hit continue. And it will install Clam TK. This is the virus scanner I've been using for many years. And it is free. You don't have to pay a, a annual subscription for it. You just use it. That's one of the great things about Linux with all the free software. And uh, it's just to simply in your software manager and install it there. And then you can also install many other programs. Like SM Player. But this thing, this new one though, one thing I gotta say about that is it is definitely a lot slower. This new software manager um, part here. So I'm just gonna install SM Player. And since it has this thing here, yeah, I gotta go continue there. Continue. I'll install that as well. And I'll also install this thing here, whatever that is icons or whatever huh? hey i'll take it it's free i'll take it and make sm player work better and this is the uh program that i tend to when i can't get vlc to play something i go to sm player as i've reviewed in some of my previous satellite videos where i couldn't get the uh stream to work uh in vlc but then i started using an sm player and it was working so while you're installing programs there should be like a little thing in here somewhere to tell you what it's doing. There, so show installed programs and they're all installed. I One thing I didn't do in this, I just did right away was I installed uh, Kden Live. The only thing is, and as, um, I have said in other videos before this version has different rendering options that are not as good as what I've seen before so and I use Kden Live a lot so I'm I'm a little bit lost in how to do these rendering settings maybe I'll try rendering at a higher quality I am working with more 1080p videos now so maybe I'll just have to switch to that 